Okay, I think we are live. Wonderful. Let's do a quick check. I think we are. Okay, so aha, I'm live. Wonderful. Let me send my message. Hello and welcome to In the News number two. That's right. So let's take a peek. What are we going to do today? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, today this is a live English lesson. I'm speaking to you from my home live. What are we studying? Well, we are going to talk about news headlines, right? We're going to explore and explain some vocabulary. We're going to have some fun, right? So let's get started. Let's take a look at the article that we're going to use. Here it is. So this is from Techie Blog. It's techieblog.com. And the title of this blog article, I guess, is 10 Funny News Headlines You Won't Believe Are Real. Hmm. That's right. I can't do normal. <laughs> I won't do boring headlines. These are ones that are kind of interesting. Okay, so let's jump right in. We're going to scroll down. Ooh. Okay, so in the first headline, it says... Florida woman calls 911 after McDonald's runs out of McNuggets. Hmm. Well, let's make sure first that we understand uh, what this headline means. So if it says Florida woman, it just means, you know, a woman who's living in Florida. She calls 911. Hmm. Well, different countries have different emergency numbers. In the United States, in America, the emergency number is 911. I think... When I was in South America, it was like 333 or 999. It kind of depends on what country you're in. So if you call 911, you're probably going to talk to a 911 operator. And a 911 operator is a person. It might be a man, it might be a woman, but they're sitting there and they have a whole bunch of computers in front of them and uh, they're, you know, they talk on the phone. Ah, I see people in the comments. All right, Olga Svetova says, hello, hello. Uh, Mustafa Arz Arzi says, hi, dear instructor. <laughs> Olga Svetova says, it really is an emergency? <laughs> so you knew that the, the articles or the headlines that I chose would be unique. All right, Mariam D says, hello. All right, Merv Chelan Alp says, hello. Hello, hello, everyone. All right, so just for those who just arrived, the article we're talking about is Florida, or the headline, Florida woman calls 911 after McDonald's runs out of McNuggets. Ah, Benny Beth says here. <laughs> Welcome. So we're taking a look at what is a what is 911. So in the United States, 911 is the emergency number, and I'm sure each country has their own. So if you call 911, you're going to talk with a 911 operator. An operator is just a person who's talking on the phone. And for example, this in, is in Chicago. Uh, Chicago 911 operators, police dispatchers, the ones that basically they talk to you when there's an emergency. Hopefully it's an emergency. And then they connect you with the proper emergency personnel. It might be an ambulance. It might be firefighters. It might be the police, uh, depending on the emergency. <clears throat> so... All right, so a woman from Florida calls 911 and speaks with <laughs> a 911 operator. And why does she call? After McDonald's runs out of McNuggets? Hmm. Well, runs out means, you know, they have no more supply. So she's at McDonald's. <clears throat> Let's see a picture of McDonald's. McDonald's, here we go. Okay, so she's in a McDonald's restaurant inside, that's right. Okay, so she's inside, maybe at the counter, she's ordering, I'll have a burger, I'll have some ice cream, I'll have some McNuggets. What are McNuggets? I think that's what, yep, McNuggets. What are McNuggets? Mmm, McNuggets are chicken. That's not really chicken. <laughs> well, I don't think they use the best parts of the chicken. They kind of put it all together. Aha, here we go. Mustafa Arzi says, a small piece of chicken or fish that has been covered in breadcrumbs and fried. Yes, 
That sounds like a dictionary definition, but either way, that's very, that's perfect. <laughs> we don't even need to see the picture. That's a great definition. So these are chicken nuggets and you might dip them in a uh, barbecue sauce. Let's take a look. McNug McNuggets with barbecue sauce. Aha, uh -huh. tangy barbecue or barbecue sauce, you might dip it. It's also common to, to eat them with honey. <laughs> Mustafa RZ says yes. <laughs> All right, so the pure honey is probably the most healthy thing in this meal. But I have to admit, I mean, chicken nuggets are really good. They're, they're, they're quite tasty, right? Okay, so back to the story. Let's make sure we stay focused here. All right, so the woman from Florida calls 911 after McDonald's runs out of McNuggets. I don't know about you, but this is a true emergency. <laughs> uh, and if this is her, mm, it's possible. Uh, Mustafa RZ says they are not healthy. That's true. Many things we eat, they taste nice, but they are not healthy. I agree with you. Okay. So this lady, she calls 911, and I, I mean, the police probably go if they don't have any other emergencies, especially if the woman is freaking out and if she's yelling at the workers, she could be like, you know, verbally assaulting them, or if she physically assaults them, then the workers might want to call the police. So, mm, we could say this is not really an emergency, it's not a police priority, However, I will share a story <laughs> that is similar. When I used to be a police officer, I remember there was a lady who called 911 because there was no cheese on her Whopper from Burger King. I'm not making this up. All right, let's see. Let's first we we'll go to Burger King. All right. Burger King. All right. Burger King Whopper is a kind of burger yeah it's nice right and so the lady i'm talking about she ordered and there was no cheese and she called the police and uh <laughs> august vetova says i would do the same thing valuable citizen it could have been me who called yes <laughs> and it could maybe it could have been you who went to jail for obstructing justice and uh, I think I forgot what the statutes in or the law in some places uh, they actually have a law where if you misuse the 911 services like I remember a person who kept calling 911 because they were trying to order pizzas and they were having difficulty ordering pizzas and eventually we arrested them <laughs> because they're taking the phone line away from someone that could be actually having an emergency Mm-hmm. Uh, Olga Svetova says, no, I mean in the news. Mm-hmm. Our Mustafa RZ says, that situation was an emergency for her. <laughs> she worships her belly. Yes. If there are no McNuggets, mm, what do you do? All right. Okay, so this is the first headline. Before I move to the next one, I'm going to ask you guys if you have any questions. So this is the Florida woman. <laughs> August Sled Thomas says, just kidding. That's fine. <laughs> I appreciate your guy's sense of humor because today is pretty much all about serious, I guess. Well, she thought it was serious, but these headlines are kind of kind of funny, right? All right. Does anyone have a question about this headline? Florida woman calls 911 after McDonald's runs out of McNuggets. In other words, we could say, this lady called 911 and spoke to a 911 operator when her worst nightmare came true. They were had no more McNuggets at McDonald's. Okay, and this news came from foxnews.com. Wonderful. Okay, here we go to the next one. Da, 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 da. This one is from, let me adjust so you can see. Good Morning America. And the, and the headline is, Pilot Turns Back. After snake pops out of dashboard. <laughs> Let's see. Mustafa RZ says it, it is not a slow day. Thanks for everyone. And I'm not sure if you're talking about people in the comments or if you're talking about uh, people 
like this who call the police <laughs> and uh make it so it's not a boring slow day for everyone i guess she's creating business she's creating business for the civil servants the police all right so the pilot turns back after snake pops out of dashboard hmm so we know we're talking about a snake there's a picture right pilot aha uh -huh. so we'll be talking about an airplane pilot right let's take a look airplane pilot right okay aha uh -huh. this is great because in this headline it says dashboard and if you're an air airplane pilot you probably have a dashboard something like this let's see if i can uh make it a little bit bigger Right, one second. I'm going to switch back. Aha, there we are. It's bigger. So this would be an airplane dashboard. And I'm going to guess maybe this is the pilot and this is the co-pilot. And they're going to fly in the beautiful sky. And there's some nice puffy clouds in front of them. So according to the headline, see if I can find it here. According to the headline, pilot turns back after a snake pops out of the dashboard. Hmm. So they're flying along and suddenly <laughs> somewhere a snake pops out. And if we say pops out, it's like you're just normal. All of a sudden, boop, something pops out. Something suddenly jumps out and surprises you. And it's a snake, right? And let's see. Let's go back to the article. Turns back. So turns back means he turns the plane around. So they were at one airport and they're on their way to the next airport and the snake pops out, the snake slides out, maybe slithers out, uh, not crawls, slithers would be the best one out of the dashboard. And the pilot's like, ooh, ha, ah, I don't like snakes. And he uh, goes back. Hmm. Actually, this reminds me, I think there was a movie called Snakes on a Plane. I don't know if I saw the whole thing. There it is, Snakes on a Plane. And I think it's some kind of like a horror movie. There we go. With Samuel L. Jackson, very famous actor. And I guess there are snakes on the plane. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I can make myself laugh. By the, uh, the title of the airplane, I guess uh, there are snakes on the plane. Right. I, I don't think I've seen the full movie. If you guys have seen it, you can tell me if it's good. Let's see. Khatib H.I. says maybe the pilot has snake phobia. Ooh, that's a good idea. I wonder what is the phobia called if you're afraid of snakes? Oh, we have Google, so let's use it. Uh, what is the phobia uh, called if you are afraid of snakes? Ah. Uh -huh ophidiophobia well this is new for me we're learning together all right so let's make sure they're actually telling us the truth so we're going to take that word and we're going to stick it in the dictionary and then we can have them say it too dictionary oh no oh wait not <laughs> no definitions found uh, i don't like that ophidiophobia or ophio or ophiophobia let's try that one maybe that one's in there hmm google you better not be lying to me let's take a look all right come on no definitions searching the web all right let's try let's try a new tab and we're gonna go for ophio meaning maybe there's another website i'm not trust in this one because i couldn't find it let's go to your dictionary all right uh a morbid fear of snakes Ooh, morbid is a nice word why don't we look that one up in the dictionary hmm all right let's go google you need to expand your dictionary all right here we go morbid here we go characterized by by or appealing to an abnormal and unhealthy interest in disturbing and unpleasant subjects, especially death and disease. Hmm. 
So morbid is kind of like dark. Here we go. Synonyms. Ghoulish. Macabre. Unhealthy. Gruesome. Grisly. Grotesque. Ghastly. Horrible. And so on. Hmm. So here we go. A morbid fear of snakes. So it's probably like a deathly fear of snakes. You freak out if you see a snake. And I imagine most people would, especially if you're flying on the plane, you're relaxed. Maybe you have uh, autopilot on, so the plane's kind of taking care of itself. And a snake pops up, and then you have ophiophobia. Nice. Okay, so the pilot goes back. He goes back to the first airport after a snake comes out of the dashboard. All right, let's move on. Ooh, this one might be a little confusing. <laughs> okay, let's stay serious. Let me adjust it. This is from Irish Central. Uh, maybe an Irish newspaper. All right, let's see. Before I move on, Mustafa RZ says, maybe the snake wished to fly and eventually managed to make it real. If a man can fly, I can do it too. That's what the snake was thinking. Morbid, Mustafa says, too interested in unpleasant subjects, especially death. Yes. So ophiophobia, a deathly fear of snakes. So you probably like freak out, you freeze up. Huh? There's a snake. Oh, I know I'm going to get off subject here, but I don't care. <laughs> I saw something the other day, something about people taking selfies with a snake. Uh, self, yeah, selfie with snake. This should be good. Oh, nice. Oh, even better. You know, why? Why would you want to do it with a nice, gentle snake? You got to go straight to the top and use cobras, right? <laughs> oh, so nice. I'm going to try to copy this image, and we'll see if we can make it a little bit bigger. All right, let's go to here. Okay, nice. See, I mean, if you're going to be doing selfies, who needs a sunset? Who needs a nice hotel or a, a beautiful pool when you have four cobras? Ah, and you're smoking at the same time. If I'm gonna guess, <clears throat> this guy looks. Uh, he could be Indonesian, maybe Malaysian. I don't know. From somewhere in Southeast Asia, and he's just chilling. He's just chilling with the snake, with the snakes. <laughs> Mustafa RZ says the best has not come yet for him. Right. Maybe we need the after. The after the selfie, uh, what happens, right? Uh-huh. Okay, so let's go back to... Ah, so nice. Is he mad? <laughs> Is he crazy, the person says. All right, selfie with snake. I guess it's like uh, you need a picture... Oh, wait. First you take the selfie, but then you need someone to take a picture of you taking the selfie with the snake. Because then it can go viral, I guess. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. Maybe we'll stay focused. Okay. All right, here we go. This one it could be a little confusing, so we'll give it time. This is from Irish Central. <laughs> oh, okay. August Veto. <laughs> I got to go back. Okay, let's go back. We have a good humorous comment. Olga Svetova says, smoking can kill. Ah, that would be the perfect uh, title or uh, what do you call it? Headline for this picture, right? Let's put it on there. Let's add it. Let's see if I can find the right color. Make it white. And we'll make it bigger. All right, so we say, smoking can kill. <laughs> <laughs> right ah uh, who cares about the snakes let's worry about his lungs and <laughs> right good good smoking can kill right all right okay here we are woman in sumo wrestler suit assaults ex-girlfriend who waved at man dressed as snickers bar hmm all right, that's a head. That's a kind of a headache even for native speakers. And Burhan Ahmad says snakes can kill earlier than smoking. <laughs> yes, I agree. I think the joke is that uh, it's common to hear people say smoking kills, cigarettes kill, 
And it's a joke that, you know, he's so calm and ignoring the snakes and taking a selfie with them. Okay, I will stay focused. Woman in sumo wrestler suit. Okay, first let's look up sumo wrestler suit. You can kind of see it here, but let's see some more. All right, sumo wrestler. So we'll look what they are, right? The guys from Japan or anywhere around the world, I guess, who want to do the sumo thing. So now we have a suit, sumo wrestler suit. Like maybe like a Halloween costume kind of thing. Aha! So if you pay the right amount of money or you whatever, you can maybe rent them. You can have a suit that looks like a sumo wrestler, right? Makes you look all big and stuff. Right. So back to the headline. Woman in sumo wrestler suit. Okay, so there's a woman who is dressed in the sumo wrestler suit, dressed up like this. She assaults ex-girlfriend. Assaults ex-girlfriend. All right, let's look up the word assault. All right, it's not usually a good thing. All right, assault. Ooh, assault rifle, not quite. We'll just look up assault. Here we go. Assault. 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 Okay. Make a physical attack on. Ooh, here's the example. He pleaded guilty to assaulting a police officer. And the synonyms. Ooh, let me move it over. You can see. We have uh, hit, strike, physically attack, aim blows at, slap, smack, beat, thrash, spank, thump, thwack, <laughs> punch, cuff, swat, knock, rap. <gasps> There's even more? <gasps> All right, where are we? Pummel, pound, batter, pelt, weld, cane, lash, whip, cub, cudgel, budge, box someone's ears, clout, wallop, belt, whack, bash. I could keep going. All right, so these are all similar words to assault. All right, so we're using a physical, physical violence against someone. You're hitting them. You're spanking them. You're, you're whacking, bashing, clobbering. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, it could also be to carry out a military attack or raid on, like you're attacking the enemy position, something like that. Okay, so a woman, she's dressed like this. She attacks, physically attacks her ex-girlfriend. So the woman has the ex-girlfriend. Oh, okay, so she's gay. She's a lesbian. The woman has an ex-girlfriend. And what did the ex-girlfriend do? She waved at a man dressed as a Snickers bar. Oh, it doesn't get any juicier than this. Okay, let's look up Snickers bar. Mmm, Snickers bar. I haven't had one of those in a long time. Snickers bar okay so this is a snickers bar it's just chocolate with peanuts and uh yeah a wafer i think it might be called inside it tastes pretty good and it's not very healthy but it tastes very nice okay snickers right so let's see a snickers bar costume i guess ah there we go wonderful okay so we have to See if we can focus on this headline here. So a woman is dressed in the sumo, rest, sumo wrestler suit, right? So the one woman is dressed like this, and she attacks her ex-girlfriend. It doesn't say how the ex-girlfriend is dressed, maybe in a sumo wrestler suit as well, but the ex-girlfriend waved, waved, can you believe it? Waved at a man dressed as a Snickers bar. Hmm. So... Uh, we have two lesbians, two gay women, and they're having a fight, I guess. And one attacks the other because she waved at a man dressed like this. <laughs> interesting. It would be interesting to know uh, uh, what actually happened after. Because if you assault someone, there's a pretty good chance you're going to get arrested. And uh, that would be an interesting police port report to write. I've had to write many police reports, but I've never written a report about a woman in sumo wrestler suit assaulting an ex-girlfriend who waved at a man dressed as a Snickers bar. I, I, I got to tell you, I'm kind of speechless here, but I do like Snickers bars. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Oh, Tootsie Roll. Okay. So a Snickers bar. 
All right. If anybody has any questions, feel free. Let's see. Burhan Ahmad says, the one who assaults would be close to a snicker bar dressed man. Possible. It's possible. Maybe they were in the same area. And uh, one of the women saw the Snickers bar guy, and she's like, hello. And all of a sudden, wham, her, uh, her girlfriend sp <laughs> punches her in the face. Don't be talking to people in Snickers bars. I don't know. I don't know. Crazy, crazy. All right, let me know if you have any questions, and I will take, I'll keep my eye on the comments. All right, here we go. Next one. All right, the title for this one is Guns. Spotted in gun store. Ooh. All right. Federal agents raid gun shop, find weapons, store owner owner arrested previously. Okay, so federal agents, we're going to be talking about like FBI, the ATF, kind of like, there we go. Federal, DEA. These are federal agents. Uh, this is a story from the U.S., so they'd probably be like these guys. And they raid, raid a gun shop. So let's say raid, federal agents raid. All right, raid is like you bust down the door. <laughs> well, it could be bust down the door, or else they just all come at, in at once, and they say, you know, everybody freeze. Don't move, don't run away. You might put them in handcuffs, but they want to get either information or they want to arrest someone. Burhan Ahmad says special branch of police. All right. Sure. Sure. Federal agents are at the uh, the higher level of government, the federal level. They have the state level, which is like more local. Then they have the federal level. And they're usually much higher. They have much more training. They're more specialized. Uh, they have more responsibility and they have a bigger jurisdiction. A jurisdiction is. Let's see. Jurisdiction is the area where they can operate. There you go. The official power to make legal decisions and judgments. Uh, there you go. The territory or sphere of activity over which the legal authority of a court or other institution extends. All right, that's a lot of words, but it's basically where you can operate. So if you're a federal agent from the United States, you can't just hop over to Mexico <laughs> and, and work there as well. All right, Mustafa RZ, yes, he's going to the dictionary. Raid, a short, sudden attack, usually by a small group of people. All right, so if uh, federal agents raid maybe an office, then they're going to go in all at once, and maybe they're going to get documents or something like that. Okay, so in this article, federal agents raid gun shop. Hmm, let's look at pictures of gun shop. Okay, so a uh, gun shop sells guns. <laughs> okay, so that's what they do. And <laughs> in the tight in the headline, federal agents raid gun shop, find weapons. Oh, <gasps> you mean they they found weapons in the gun shop? So <laughs> it's kind of funny because it's obvious, right? I mean, that's what a gun shop does. It's kind of like saying raiding a candy store and finding candy. Right. Uh, oh, oh, candy store. There we go. Like, if they raid the candy store and they're like, oh, "We found candy." Uh huh. <laughs> August Vetova says, "No way!" Right. The sarcasm. Right. Being sarcastic. <laughs> Let's look up the word sarcastic. Hmm. Good word to know. Sarcastic. All right. Let's move it over. Right. Okay, marked by or given to using irony in order to mock or convey contempt. Hmm, sarcastic comments on their failures. So it's kind of like, it's using humor, but it's in a way to kind of, kind of make fun of the situation and maybe make fun of someone, right? To be sarcastic. Like if someone's wearing, uh, let's see, let's say crazy hat. Okay, let's say someone's wearing a crazy hat like this. And inside your head, you're like, oh, that's a terrible hat. But on your words, you're like, ah, yeah, that's an, that's an awesome hat. 
and you don't try to hide your emotions, you're being sarcastic, right? So your words are saying the opposite of what you actually mean. That's the coolest hat ever. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm being sarcastic. It's a horrible hat. All right, let's see. Uh, Abdul Samad Haji says, are they supposed to find cookies? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> let's see, Burhan Ahmad, sarcastic means to tease someone. Sure, it's a way of teasing someone, right? You're saying, you're kind of saying the opposite of what you really mean. So in this one, if I'm being sarcastic to this kid, I'll be like, that's the best hat I've ever seen. Eh, not so much. I'm being sarcastic. Let's see, Khatib H.I. says, maybe they need a weapon and result of meeting, let's raid a store. Hmm. So maybe the federal agents needed to, they needed weapons, maybe? So they, <laughs> they went into the store. Ah, Olga Svetova says, they were trying to save the taxpayers' money. Oh, always looking out for us and trying to do the best thing. I guess so. I don't know. All right. And let's see, there's two parts to this headline. So federal agents raid gun shop, find weapons, which is kind of obvious, right? And oh, if you wanted to be sarcastic about this situation, you could say, oh, oh my God, you found weapons in the gun shop, right? So I'm being sarcastic because I'm I'm not really meaning what I I'm not being serious right I'm joking oh my goodness you found candy in the candy store right okay second part says store owner arrested previously okay arrested means let's see if we can get a nice picture for arrested arrested uh, by uh, police Right, if you're arrested, yep, you're probably going to jail. They put you in Ah, Mustafa RZ, is this real news? Yes, it is. Good question. I could I I would like to think that I'm creative, but I don't think I could ever make up these kind of news stories. All right? So if you're arrested by the police, they seize you, right? They take you, they put you in handcuffs, they put your hands behind your back usually, and yeah, you have to go to jail or Something like that, right? Burhan Ahmad to take into police custody. That's right. Okay, and yes, these are real news stories. <laughs> and this one was uh, Tulsa World. That's, Tulsa is a city in Oklahoma. It's a state in the United States. And just in case you're curious, let's see Oklahoma on map. All right, here we go. So this is the United States. So it's very close to Texas. So right north of Texas is Oklahoma, right? So that's where this story happened, right? So the store owner was arrested previously, and that's not very exciting, but the, whoever owned the gun shop had been arrested before, okay? All right, time to move to the next one. Ha-ha! All right, ooh, nice. This is from 10 News. In your neighborhood, Newport, Richley, Hudson. Hmm, not quite sure where that is, but somewhere in the United States. Mustafa RZ says the police officers should be comedian. <laughs> sure, why not? They would probably have wonderful stories to tell. Mm -hmm. I have wonderful stories to tell. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, let's be serious. Mm. Serious about learning English. Let's focus here, people. Okay, all right, let's do it. And news, cops. Woman attacks man with bowl of spaghetti. Huh? <laughs> okay, so we already talked about attacks, but we can look it up again and make sure. Let's see what are some synonyms for attack. All right. Let's see. Here we go. I like these synonyms. Assault, beat, batter, thrash, pummel, assail, set upon, fall upon, set out, strike at, let fly at. Okay, so we're talking about physical violence, physical aggression. So a woman attacks man, and I'm going to guess he's not just a stranger walking down the street. He's probably her boyfriend, her brother, her neighbor, her boss, her coworker, uh, her ex-boyfriend, her ex-lover, her, uh, I don't know, lots of possibilities, roommate, classmate, employee. Huh? 
So she, woman and tax man with bowl of spaghetti. Oh, I like spaghetti, but not if I'm being attacked with it. Well, let's see. Let's take a look. Bowl of spaghetti. Oh, yummy, yummy. Ah. Who knew that spaghetti could be used as a weapon? This woman, maybe she's just kind of creative, right? Oh, with jumbo meatballs? Nice. I wonder how long she took to cook the spaghetti before she attacked him. Uh-huh. Oh, maybe. Maybe the spaghetti was still boiling. Let's see. Spaghetti boiling in a pot. Oh. <laughs> Let's see, Merv Chelan Alp says, sometimes the spaghetti can be a weapon. Right. So we don't have a picture, right? Well, I mean, we have a picture of a, a very upset woman named Allison Karaz, but we don't have details. Ugh, I wish we had details. What kind of spaghetti? It says bowl of spaghetti. So it's probably not a pot of spaghetti. I mean, this could be a real weapon, right? Hot water, boiling water is hot. <laughs> uh, especially if it's uh, scalding hot water. Scalding, ooh, scalding is a great word. What does the word scalding mean? Take a look. Scalding. All right, ooh, very hot, burning. She took a sip of scalding tea, right? All right, synonyms. I love synonyms. Extremely hot, burning, blistering, searing, red hot. More piping hot, sizzling, right? Okay, so if we're talking about scalding hot water, that would fit, you know, boiling spaghetti, right? But it says she used a bowl of spaghetti. Mm, at least she could have used the hot water, but okay, let's see. Let's go back to bowl of spaghetti. I, I, I got to be honest, this doesn't look very threatening at all, right? <laughs> Maybe she dumped out the spaghetti and used the bowl to, mm, mm, to smack him. I don't know. Let's take a look at the lady. Uh, let's see, what adjectives <laughs> can we use to describe this lady? Why don't you guys help me? How would you describe how this lady feels right now? And I'm going to take a look. See, Burhan Ahmad says, maybe the bowl is the attacking tool and the, <laughs> and the spaghetti got sacrificed in it. Yes, yes. And I think, I think we could look up the word sacrificed because I think it's a good word to know. Sacrifice. Uh-huh. All right. And we're not quite talking about the biblical sense. Here we go. An act of giving up something valued for the sake of something else, regarded as more important or worthy. Right. So, as Burhan Ahmad says, maybe the bowl is the tool for attacking and the spaghetti got sacrificed. So, she's holding the bowl of spaghetti and then she like, you know, picks it up and the spaghetti falls out and she uses the bowl to smack him or throw at him. Right. All right. So, Burhan Ahmad, I'd ask the question. Can you guys tell me, how does this lady feel now? Burhan Amon says, sore-faced. Right. Let's see. Uh, let's see. And I think it's more like sore. S-O-R-E. And we'll see if it's in there. No definitions. Let's see. Sore-faced. All right. Well, we're going to go. I know it's that you can use it. Sore-faced meaning. Hmm. Hmm, no, this was talking about sore faced. Sore faced. Well, I know what you mean, and I would agree that it's a good way to describe her. Sore faced, as in like she's pissed off. <laughs> Let's see, Merv Chalen Alp says she she feels very sad now, right? Maybe we could say upset. We could say stressed out, pissed off, frustrated. Uh uh what's the word um ah, i'm losing it maybe we'll look up upset and we'll get some uh some some synonyms ah and scared says merv chalen oh okay here we go upset 
Distressed, troubled. Yes, that would work. Ooh, ooh, got a lot here. Disturbed, discomposed, unsettled, disconcerted, discountenance. Ooh, let's try to find upset as in the adjective. There it is, adjective. Nice. Synonyms. Distressed, troubled, perturbed, disturbed, discomposed, unsettled, disconcerted. Ah, oh, it just keeps going. All right, here we go. Burhan Ahmad says fatigued. I think that fits. <laughs> She's had a long day. Mustafa RZ says she looks like so angry, furious, right? Merv Chalan Alp says maybe awful, right? She probably feels awful. <gasps> Embarrassed? Mm, maybe it happened in front of her house. She's chasing after the man with the spaghetti. And she's chasing and she maybe stops to eat a little bit. <laughs> and then she goes after him. And the neighbors catch it. And they video, re they record it and they put it on YouTube. So maybe she's embarrassed as well. All right. So uh, upset could be vexed, irked, fretted, flustered. Uh, there are a lot of ways to say upset. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Ah, it's lovely. We can use our imagination when we see such strange headlines. All right. So according to the cops, this woman attacked. She tried to hurt a man with a bowl of spaghetti. So remember, the next time you see a, a nice, juicy, yummy bowl of spaghetti, Remember, it can, it can be used as a weapon. Hmm. They didn't tell us if there was sauce, did they? Maybe they just mean an empty bowl, or not empty, but just, just the pasta. Just the spaghetti without any sauce. <laughs> Mustafa RZ says, who is in front of her should be terrified, right? Whoever is in front of her, be scared, run away. This picture is probably... Oh, she has a tattoo of a star. How nice. <laughs> I, I would say it probably doesn't represent her star personality. But she's probably... Her. All right, so let's see. Uh, this is what you would call a mug shot. A mug shot. Mug shot is a, a picture they take of you once you get to jail. Mug shot. Here we go. Mmm, nice. <laughs> and let's just say... When you're in, when you're taken to jail, uh, you probably don't want to be in the picture. But they have to take a picture because uh, it's for their files and all of this stuff, right? So these are mug shots. Actually, this lady looks kind of okay. <laughs> Everyone else is kind of like, eh, you know, I don't want to be here. Uh huh. All right. So Mustafa Arzia says, whoever's in front of her should be terrified, or they will kick the bucket. Yes, kick the bucket means to die. Very common idiom in English. Okay, so we're going to say goodbye to Alison Karras. Crazy woman with a bowl of spaghetti. Let's move forward. Okay, this one is from the Detroit News. All right, Detroit is in Michigan. All right, let's take a look. Michigan on map. Michigan is in the northern part. Yes, Michigan is right here. It's actually two parts. There's a peninsula up here, two peninsulas. And it's close to Wisconsin, Illinois, Ohio. Right, so this is Michigan. And a big city in Michigan is Detroit, the Detroit News. So that's the name of the newspaper or the news agency. Okay, motorist dressed as Batman escapes ticket in Maryland. Hmm, interesting that they have... A story from Maryland in the Detroit News, because Maryland is uh, not very close to Michigan. All right, so, well, it's still pretty far. Michigan's up here, and Maryland's down here, but the United States is quite large, so if you drive, it's going to take a while to get there. Ah, we have a great question. Burhan Ahmad says, what is a peninsula? I love questions. If you guys have more questions, ask away and I will try to answer. A peninsula is uh, part of a, it's like a land mass that sticks out. Let's see. There we go. Peninsula. Okay. 
So if we look at this picture, we could say this is like, well, this one's a really small one, but it's good to understand the idea. It's a part of land that sticks out into the water, right? And let's go find the dictionary definition, all right? Ah, Mustafa RZ beat me to it. Nice, well done. Let's see if he's telling the truth. <laughs> Mustafa Arzi says, a long piece of land that sticks out from a larger area of land into the sea or into a lake. All right, let's see what Google says. There you go. A piece of land almost surrounded by water or projecting out into a body of water. All right, thank you, Mustafa Arzi. You beat me to it. Well done. Well done, my friend. Uh, synonyms, cape. Promontory. I haven't heard that word before. Point, head, headland, foreland. Mm. And just in case you wanted to know, it has an origin in Latin. Interesting. Okay, so here are some pictures of peninsulas. And this, oh, this is a this is Florida actually. So Florida, the state of Florida in the United States, is one huge peninsula because it it points out into the ocean. All right. <clears throat> Burhan Ahmad says, what is the difference between peninsula and island? Mm -hmm. Well, the simple answer is island is completely surrounded with water, right? Island, all right? So an island is completely surrounded with water. No matter where you walk off the island, you're going to get wet. If you walk off the peninsula, you can walk back to land, right? You can just walk back to land. Okay? Let's see. Mustafa RZ says U R W. Hmm. You are wrong. You are you are wonderful. Hmm. Hmm. What does U R W stand for? Not quite sure. So Burhan Ahmad, <clears throat> an island is completely surrounded by water. Like this. And a peninsula is still connected to land, right? Okay. Oh, <laughs> URW is you are welcome. Mm -hmm. Ah, Mariam D says, how about bay? All right, so a bay is more referring to the water. All right, let's go to, let's see, a bay of water. There we go. So this time we're not talking about the land part, we're talking about the water. So here is a bay, right? I guess you could say that we're talking about the water or the land because the land forms around the water. But a bay is just an area where the water comes into the land, right? It's not a lake uh, because it's still connected to whatever ocean or <clears throat> place that it is. It could be part of a big lake, but this would be a bay. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I love it when you guys ask questions. If you have any more, feel free. So we did bay, we did peninsula, we did island. Great, great stuff. Mariam D says, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. Because most of the time, when someone has a question, someone else has a question as well. <laughs> but maybe they're just not ready to ask. Okay. All right. Somehow we will get back to the news story. Ooh. Let's see, Burhan Amman says, can we say that water near the coastline? Well, that if you say water near the coastline, that's very broad, right? It's very broad. Ooh. Mustafa RZ, Bay, a part of the coast where the land curves in, right? So here the land curves in so that the sea is surrounded by land on three sides. Wonderful. Thank you, Mustafa. <laughs> Mr. Dictionary, mm, thank you. See, Burhan Ahmad says, can we say that the, it's water near the coastline? Well, you can say that, but you could also say any water that's near the coast. Coastline. Oops, coastline. Here we go. And coastline is just the border. It's just the edge where the water meets the land, right? So if you're on a bay, you have a coastline. If you're on a big continent, if you're an island, there's always a coast, right? It's just the edge where the water meets the land. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Motorist dressed as Batman escapes ticket in Maryland. All right, let's look up motorist. Motorist. Here we go. 
All right, and pretty simple. Motorist means the driver of an automobile, right? And if you, uh, you could say cyclist if you ride a bicycle, a person who rides a bicycle, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So motorist is a car driver, cyclist is a bicycle driver. All right. Here we go. Motorist dressed as Batman. Hmm. I think we need to see some Batman costumes. Sky Blue says hello from Turkey. Hello, hello. All right. Let's see. And is it Merhaba? I think Merhaba. Sky Blue says, I'm sorry I'm late. No worries, because this is recorded too, right? So it'll be available to everyone on YouTube. All right, what was I going to look up? Oh, Batman costumes. Okay. Woo, nice. Oh, I, like, I think this one's good. Nice, very nice. Sky Blue says, yes, Merhaba. Aha, I remembered. Nice, well done. Let's see. Okay, so a motorist, a car driver, dressed as Batman, escapes ticket in Maryland. So when they say escapes, they make it sound kind of like the police chased him. Because if you escape from something, sometimes you think of like, you know, they drove away. But it can just mean you got out of something. You didn't have to uh, pay for it. You, you didn't have, you didn't get the ticket, right? Must <laughs> Mustafa RZ says like Zorro and I think there are two R's in Zorro and actually Zorro means fox in <laughs> fox in, in uh, Spanish here we go <clears throat> yes but Zorro has a sword mm-hmm but still I would rather have Batman's cool toys and his his cool uh, uh, gadgets and tools right but yeah he kind of looks like Zorro Okay, so a motorist, a car driver in a Batman costume, doesn't get a ticket in Maryland. And the car he's driving is awesome. Burhan Ahmad says, Batman treated as a VIP. Yes, VIP, very important person. Let's see if they have it in the dictionary, I'm curious. Ooh, there we go. VIP, a very important person. A party for 400 VIPs from the world of sports and showbiz. So it's like a celebrity, famous person, very important person, right? So, I'm trying to think, is this a Corvette? It might be a Corvette, huh? It's a nice sports car. Let's see. Uh, Corv new Corvette. No, it doesn't quite look right, does it? Uh, rear view. Maybe. Oh, wait, no. No, it doesn't look right, is it? What kind of car is that? So, oh, maybe it's a, 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 a Dodge Viper? Ah, Burhan Ahmad says Lamborghini. Let's take a look. Ooh, okay. I will be the first one to say I am not a car expert. And we'll do rear view. Hmm, maybe more like, let's see, they have different models, right? I'm trying to find that one. Something, I think it's a pretty good guess though, huh? A Lamborghini, okay. So, what do we know about Lamborghinis? They're awesome, <laughs> they're fast, and I guess Batman has one. Nice way to go, Batman. So the police probably stopped him for some reason uh, because the police are supposed to have a reason to stop people, right? Maybe he was going too fast. Maybe he wasn't staying in his lane. Maybe his license plate was expired. Maybe his lights weren't working, something like that. So they stopped him. And <laughs> I don't know. They probably asked for his driver's license. Ooh, on the dashboard cam, this is, the this is the view from the police officer's vehicle, and they have a dashboard cam. All right, so they have a camera inside the police car to make sure that <clears throat> everything is recorded. And we can see that, wow, this was way back in 2012. 
Uh, and in the United States, we put the month first. So it's March 21st, 2012 at 1047 <clears throat> in the morning. Uh-huh. Okay. So Batman got away. He escaped the ticket. He didn't get a ticket from the police in Maryland. All right. Moving forward. Ah, uh, getting interesting. All right. This is from sunsentinel.com. I think it's another uh, news agency. Let's move up. Cops. According to the police, man ate stolen ice cream sandwich he kept in pants. Well, I think the first thing we need to do is look up ice cream sandwich. Uh-huh. Delicious. Tasty. Not so healthy. All right. So, and there it is. It's in the... <laughs> I look it up and it's right in front of me. <clears throat> okay. So the man ate stolen ice cream sandwich he kept in pants. Okay, so maybe, well, first he stole the ice cream sandwich, and for some reason he kept it in his pants. Let's see, Mustafa RZ says why he didn't fly. Hmm. Are we talking about Batman? Hmm. He's probably not talking about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> right? Maybe Batman could have uh, used his cool, uh, yeah, I don't know what they're called, bat plane, something like that, to fly away. Okay, so man ate stolen ice cream sandwich he kept in pants. And why he hid it in his pants, I don't know, but he ate it. And maybe they caught him on camera and the they wanted him to go to jail. I don't know. This is kind of strange and maybe not worth talking about. Ah, Sky Blue says Batmobile. Hmm, Batmobile. I wonder if there's a special name for his airplane. Batplane? Ah, oh, there is one. Ah, yes. Why didn't he use the Batplane? Uh-huh. Nice. Okay. All right, we'll skip on past this one, but now you know what an ice cream sandwich is. Okay. More food. Man accused of stealing truck full of Krispy Kremes. And Krispy Kreme is pretty international. I think they had, I think they went bankrupt in the United States, so I don't know if there are many left. But uh, I've seen Krispy Kremes around the world. Krispy Kreme. Whoop. Uh, yes, Krispy Kreme. All right. So they sell a lot of donuts, coffee, stuff like that. Right. Sky Blue says look like donuts. Right. Exactly. So this headline, man accused of stealing truck full of Krispy Kremes. So why don't we put in truck full of donuts? See what happens. Truck full of donuts. <laughs> I, okay. I guess this would work. I suppose Dunkin' Donuts is uh, Krispy Kreme's competitor, but, ooh, ooh, Krispy Kreme truck is on fire, ooh, interesting, and this guy feels embarrassed in the picture, interesting, okay, I will try to stay focused, <laughs> Mustafa RZ says, don't show these yummy sweets, please, <laughs> uh-huh, all right. They look pretty good, don't they? Ah. Oh, let's take oh, let's take a moment. Ah, delicious. But I won't be eating any any of them. They're not so healthy, but okay. Ah, more. Ah. So delicious. So he's accused. What does the word accused mean? Hmm. Accused. All right. Accused. All right is accused 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 okay so here it's a noun so we're describing the person in this one we'll talk about the verb in a moment an accused person or the accused is a person or group of people who are charged with or on trial for a crime so it hasn't been proven that they did it they're on trial or they're charged so maybe they have evidence that the person did it, but they're going to do a trial in front of the judge 
or maybe a trial in front of the jury. Let's do a trial in court. Right? So there's a trial. Let's get a bigger picture. A person is on trial. Someone accused them, said they did something, and now they're going to have a trial to see if they can prove. Does the evidence show that they did it? All right. So accused uh, the person. It could be the person who is accused, or we could also have a verb to accuse, and it means charge someone with an offense or crime. All right. Ooh, this is a nice example. He was accused of murdering his wife's lover. Juicy and full of drama. Ah, Burhan Ahmad says, "Can we say an alleged person?" Hmm, that's similar, right? Alleged. Alleged means that there's not enough proof yet, right? We think that's what's happened. Yeah, I would say that works very well. But it's accused is like, I would say, a higher level. Because accused is like, eh, if there's a trial, they probably have some pretty good evidence, right? Alleged is kind of like, we think he did it. Accused is like, we're pretty sure he did it. But let's put in alleged. All right, of an incident or person said without proof to have taken place. All right, so when they're accused, they probably have proof. Maybe not great proof or great evidence, but they have some. Alleged, it says here, without proof. So it's kind of like a rumor, right? It might be true, but if there's no proof, it's difficult to show. It's difficult to demonstrate, right? Synonyms to alleged, supposed, so-called claimed, professed, purported, and so on. The place where the alleged offenses were committed. The place where the crimes we, th we think they happen, right? But maybe we have a lack of evidence. Mm hmm Okay. All right. So a man was accused. People said they have evidence <laughs> that he stole a truck full of Krispy Kremes. And I imagine it would be very difficult for him to lie if he's sitting in the back of the truck <laughs> eating the donuts, right? I didn't do it. I swear I didn't do it. <laughs> okay. And Mustafa Arzi says, alleged, said or thought by some people to be the stated bad or illegal thing. Although you have no proof. Mm-hmm. Right. So this guy's accused, so they arrested him, and they probably have a trial, or maybe he pled guilty. He said, you know, I did it, just I'll pay the fine, whatever. So, yeah. It's very hard to... to <laughs> well, I suppose you can eat the evidence, you can eat the donuts, and then if you do it before anybody arrives, you'll be like, what donuts? <clears throat> what donuts, right? But it's hard to hide the truck. But it kind of looks like the one Krispy Kreme truck, if I can find it, Let's see, Krispy Kreme, Kreme truck on fire. There it is. <laughs> Do we have the Krispy Kreme? Maybe it was the guy who stole the truck of Krispy Kremes, and he's trying to burn the evidence. He's trying to burn the the the, the proof that he actually did it. Mm hmm. Okay. Great. This one is from Gainesville. Gainesville. I'm not quite sure where Gainesville is. Let's see. Gainesville, Florida, maybe. Gainesville. Yes, Gainesville, Florida. All right. Why don't we take a quick peek at Gainesville, Florida, where the guy was accused of stealing the donuts? Huh. Looks nice. Looks nice. Mm, not bad. Okay. Let's see, Burhan Ahmad says, can we say alleged as sus suspected? Like he's suspected of doing something. It's a little bit different because if you're suspected of doing something, well, hmm, great question, great question. It would depend on the context. Well, I would need more information, right? Do they have proof? 
right? Because the police will bring in a suspect, right? They might interview a suspect because maybe they have some evidence, but not really strong evidence. If they had strong evidence, they would just go arrest the person. But if they interview a suspect, they're kind of testing, right? To see if the person will say something that means, you know, I did it or something. So interview a suspect, all right? <laughs> This is more like interrogation. <laughs> interrogation is like a much more intense interview. Okay. Uh, so I'm trying to answer Bohan Ahmad's question. Can we say alleged as suspected? It's a bit different. I would say that alleged, you don't, you really don't have much proof, right? The evidence, eh, there's not much there, not enough to be able to bring them to court. But if you're suspected of something, the police might be watching you for a while to see if they'll find evidence or try to make the evidence that they have even stronger. So it's similar, right? Because people are still saying that you did something. But if it's alleged, there's just a lack of proof. Suspected could be you have some proof. You have some reason, right? Maybe you have a witness. Maybe you have some evidence, but it's, uh, it's not really good. See, Mustafa Arzi. Maybe he saw that those sweets were not cooked well, so he wanted to fry them some more. Ah, he's such a nice guy. He's such a nice guy, he's going to help everyone out. All right. Okay, it's already getting late. All right. I'm going to have to wrap up <laughs> because it's already been over an hour, and I have other things I need to do. Okay, so I am going to be finished. Let's take a quick look. What did we do today? Ah, remember this one? Smoking can kill. All right, so let's take a look. What did we do today? What did we accomplish in this live lesson? Da -da -da. Well, we talked about news headlines. We talked about other things that were completely unrelated to the news headlines, but it's great, especially when you have questions. I hope I was able to answer your questions, all right? We explored and explained vocabulary from the news headlines and other things that were just in the conversation. And your questions. I love the questions. And number three, we had some fun. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I had a good time. Especially when you talk about crazy things that people do. It's having fun. <laughs> Mustafa RZ says, thanks a lot. It was a marvelous session. Thank you. I love the word marvelous. <laughs> Thank you for the kind words. Okay, so if you enjoyed our content, make sure to subscribe. Let's do the animation. Here we go. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Okay, simple animation, but so nice. All right, let's finish with the motto with Able Lingo. Improve your English, become more valuable. Improve your ability to have good communication clear communication and suddenly you have more skills right you're able to do more things communicate with more people okay well that's it for today thank you very much for attending this live and i will say see you soon <laughs>